Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon if you don't want a Master Chief video, because Master Chief is on the pull and God help the other characters. Like and subscribe for simple lore next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building the knight from Hollow Knight, which is not the Hollow Knight because that's a boss from Hollow Knight that you fight as the knight from Hollow Knight. Technically Hollow Knight won the poll, but I'm pretty sure people understood that to mean the protagonist from the game. I hope they did. You know what, just for safety, let's do a Zote build instead. Everyone's picking my books. Just kidding, we're doing the knight, but if you want a Hollow Knight or Hornet or Zote, I guess, make this a big hit and I'll be encouraged to do some more Hollow Knight videos. We'll start off with our goals for this build though. First, we need mobility. You're from the Dark Souls of Platformers, which for those out of the loop means jump good, game hard. Next is a twofer. We need to be a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll. With country being unfathomable darkness at the bottom of the kingdom and the rock and roll being the radiant royal blood from the king and queen of the kingdom. We'll start off with the standard point array from the player's handbook roll for stats if you want, you just need Charisma. Charisma will be our number one stat, which might seem weird for a character that doesn't speak. But spellcasters with a natural spellcasting ability, or spellcasters that get their spells from doing people favors, are all charisma based. Plus, I mean, come on. The knight is adorable. Dexterity next, you've got to be quick if you don't want to die, which you don't. It's really stressful knowing that you have to bust your own ghost. Constitution next, it helps to wear a mask if you don't want to die. I'm talking about the game, definitely talking about the game, but also, you know, wear a mask. Follow that up with strength, climbing checks, and jumping are tied to it, and you jump like a grasshopper and sting like a wasp. Intelligence is a bit low, but to be fair, history and religion checks are hard when your library is flooded. We'll dump wisdom though, the banker lady stole all of your money, there was that thing with the spiders, maybe that's more of a two-lock issue. There won't be any spoilers for the Hollow Knight game here, but there will be spoilers for the wiki that you read after you've beaten the game and still need to figure out what the story is of the thing that you spent 30 hours beating. The knight is a bug that got birthed with a bunch of other bugs into a vat of darkness that crawled out into the light. There isn't a race for that in D&D. Hollow Nest is kind of its own setting, so we'd need to change it up anyway. That's why we're also not going to focus on making the knight a small creature, because relative to other things in Hollow Nest, you're average size. Dreams? You, you, you do dream stuff though, so we're going to go Kalish Star. They get plus two wisdom and plus one charisma. Charisma, dual mind for advantage on wisdom saving throws, mental discipline for resistance to psychic damage, and mind link to communicate with creatures telepathically as long as they speak one language. I don't think that the knight is actually mute, but they don't speak to the shopkeeps, and the shopkeeps still understand them. Obviously, telepathy. You're also severed from dreams, meaning that you don't dream maybe because you're an empty husk, pumped full of dark juice that started moving around and putting nails in things. For your background, we need to build our own for physical skills like acrobatics and athletics because we're not going to be able to get them from our classes. Some options we ignored here in the racial area, Goblin and Asmar, mostly because they get dark vision and the knight specifically doesn't. You have to get lights later. We'll kick things off as a warlock giving us intimidation and investigation. Did you ever stop and think that maybe the bosses are just just as scared of you as you are of them? Probably because of all the fancy powers that everyone's giving you. Hexblade is good for bugs that get gifts that help them stab stuff by becoming Hex Warriors, letting you use your Charisma modifier for your weapon attacks instead of your dexterity or strength. I would say that a rapier would work for a nail, but you slash with the nail for some reason? So probably Scimitar, which is a d6 slashing instead of a d8 piercing, but it's fine. To go really hard on a boss, Hexblade's Curse lets you pick a creature to crit with a 19 or 20. You get to add your proficiency bonus to the damage of your attacks against them and heal your warlock level plus your charisma modifier when you kill them. There isn't a way to recharge soul with attacks, but this will at least let you get your focus back after you kill things. It's the closest we're gonna get. Of course, you also get spells. Eldritch Blast is a terrible cantrip. It fires a ranged beam that deals 1d10 force damage if your spirit is feeling vengeful. Actually, it's more like Shade Soul. We're not getting abilities in order. Anyway, even though Eldritch Blast is terrible, thankfully we have True Strike, which lets you break through the vague lore of the series to remind your audience that except Accessibility is a good thing and ableism doesn't need to be in your campaign. Why would you celebrate bullying? It also lets you make a weapon attack with advantage next turn if you want to charge up a nail art or just get your quick slash on an attack twice to live your life. Hexblade Warlocks can learn shield, letting you add five to your AC as a reaction, which could be a nice dream shield if you like that charm. Not my favorite. Expeditious Retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration for a little Mothwing cloak thing that we can upgrade later. Second level Warlocks get invocations, which are special abilities that you can only 
they get by charming the locals, like Agonizing Blast letting you add your charisma modifier to the damage of your terrible Eldritch Blast cantrip. Think of these as charms, and think of this as the Shaman Stone, a really good charm. You could grab another one, but we'll actually be able to get a Pale Stone thing next level, so at this level just grab the spell Armor of Agathus, which will give you 5 temporary HP and deal 5 cold damage to creatures that hit you with a melee attack while you have that temporary HP up. The Thorns of Agony Charm would probably do piercing damage, but this and Hellish Rebuke are the only two options for don't hit me smells, so we gotta work with what we got. Third level Warlocks can choose a Pact, and the Nail Master would be into giving you a sword so you can kill him, so Pact of the Blade will be my pick. It makes a weapon magical, and you can conjure it as an action. You can also use it as a spellcasting focus, but your weapons are always small and one-handed, so not really an issue. Scoop up the improved Pact Weapon Invocation to add one to the attack and damage rolls with the weapon if you want to upgrade that nail. Unfortunately, this is the highest we can go. For this level's spell, Spider Climb lets you climb walls and ceilings for an hour. It's kind of weird that there are spiders in Hollow Nest, but you get wall crawling abilities from the mantises whatever the mantis lords are dope and i'm not going to complain when they give you a cool present i know that you can technically get the mantis claw before you fight the mantis lords but you, you, we don't need to be pedantic fourth level warlocks get an ability score improvement i'd go for charisma your attacks don't get stronger because you get more nimble they get stronger because you ask people really nicely for a better weapon or i guess stare at them with your empty giant eyes until they concede out of a mixture of fear and charm charisma for this level spell, Misty Step lets you teleport 30 feet as a bonus action. It's nice to just dart away and not take damage for half a second. The cloak might look shady, but it is useful. Fifth level Warlocks get another invocation. Thirsting Blade lets you attack twice with your action instead of once, basically making you a full caster and a full martial fighter at the same time. You're the only bug that's not crazy or obsessed with cartography, which is kind of crazy. That's not even calligraphy. Basically, you're the only one who's getting things done. For this level spell, Fly gives a creature a flying speed of 60 feet for 10 minutes. You might be a bug, but you're a bird at heart. At Crystal Heart! Am I dropping enough jargon? Are people still gonna say I didn't play this game? I mean, they are, so why try? I think that's enough edge. Let's get a little glow bug action because, well, you're a you're a little glow bug. Divine Soul Sorcerer is great if you wanted the flavor of Light Cleric, but might end up killing some gods of light later, so you're not feeling like making the commitment. Holy Solies are favored by the gods, letting you add 2d4 to a failed saving throw or attack roll once per short rest. Falling on spikes is probably a deck save, that's why it resets you at the start of the room. I really do play these games, and watch these shows, please stop saying I don't. For this level spell, light creates a light that will help you deal with the fact that your entire adventure takes place underground and you don't have dark vision. Sacred Flame forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures dealing 2d8 radiant damage if they fail and you can ignore cover which should be great for those hard to reach faces places faces in places that are hard to hit guidance and resistance give a creature a d4 to add to ability checks and saving throws respectively as you lean forward in your chair and get real serious you're gonna beat this boss for this level spell, Guiding Bolt is a big old laser that deals 4d6 radiant damage with a ranged spell attack, and the next person attacking the creature gets advantage, which could be you. Wouldn't that be nice? Cure Wounds will let you heal a creature 1d8 plus your charisma modifier as an action. Mix this level in earlier if you want. I just never had to heal because I'm so good at the game. Mixing Warlock and Sorcerer means that you're basically getting the same spell slots you would if you didn't multi-class into another casting option. Just remember that your Warlock slots recharge on short rests and the Sorcerer slots recharge on long rests. Otherwise, feel free to cast Warlock spells with Sorcerer slots and Sorcerer spells with Warlock slots. Second level Sorcerers get a Font of Magic with Sorcery Points you can use to recover spell slots. You can also melt your Sorcerer spells down into Sorcery Points if you'd rather do that. For this level spell, Mage Armor makes your AC 13 plus your Dex dexterity modifier for eight hours to keep you a little bit safer out in those spoopy caverns. Third level sorcerers get metamagic, letting you spend your sorcery points to augment your spells. Quicken Spell lets you cast a spell as a bonus action that normally takes an action. Use that on the terrible Eldritch Blast spell to shoot four beams in a round right now and eight beams in a round later, or slash twice and then still shoot beams. Pro Hollow Knight tip, you won't need to heal if the boss is just dead. Heightened Spell lets you give a creature disadvantage on a saving throw, useful for spells like Detect Thoughts. This lets you see people's surface level thoughts and you can dive deeper if they fail a wisdom saving throw. Hopefully they have more to say than just kill attack. Fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement, letting you cap off your charisma modifier for maximum spells and nails. Grab Thunder Wave from the first level for your spell here. This forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet, half as much if they succeed and they're not pushed. I think that that cube could be above you if you look up, or you could just aim the shriek in front of you. Wouldn't that be nice? 
Fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells. Protection from energy lets you give a creature resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage. I still wouldn't swim in acid if I were you, but you've got an hour depending on your concentration, so get done what you need to and get out of there. Still only taking half damage, but that's better than full. Sixth level divine soul sorcerers get empowered healing, letting you spend a hit die to re-roll die you use to heal with your cure wounds. Healing is always a risk, it might as well pay off. For this level spell, speak with the dead lets you ask a dead bug five questions. Maybe if you dream nail every corpse, you'll understand what the heck is going on in the world. Seventh level sorcerers get fourth level spells. Death ward puts you at one HP the first time you would normally hit zero in an eight hour period. There isn't really an option for your body going somewhere else while you die while your soul angrily waits for you to come kill it revenant maybe but even that is substantially different eighth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement start investing in your dexterity currently your ac with mage armor is 15 and that's really bad for this level spell dimension door lets you teleport 500 feet as an action but i'd like to call it a dream gate because that's what they call it in the that's what they call it in the game Ninth level sorcerers can learn 5th level spells. Insect Plague creates a 20 foot radius of swarming bugs that deal 4d10 piercing damage to creatures inside that fail a constitution saving throw, and it deals that damage to any creature who enters the area as well, half as much on a successful save. I actually don't know how this spell got on the list, must be a fluke. 10th level sorcerers get another metamagic option. Empowered spell lets you reroll a number of damage die on spells you cast equal to your charisma modifier for more consistent DPS. For this level spell, get some real damage from legend lore, which gives you information about a person, place, or thing of legendary renown. The more you know about something, the more you learn, so talk to some dead bugs, do a little googling, whatever you gotta do to understand the story. 11th level sorcerers can learn 6th level spells. Sunbeam lets you shoot a 60 foot laser out of your hand that forces a constitution saving throw, dealing 68 radiant damage to those that fail and blinding them until the end of your next turn. Undead and oozes have disadvantage and you can shoot beams every turn for a minute depending on your concentration if you really want to spam those soul shots. 12th level sorcerers get our last ability score improvement. Dexterity is going to be my pick. If you don't get hit, you don't need to heal so you don't need to have a heart attack like I did when I was playing the game. Not a literal one, but it was stressful. 13th level sorcerers get 7th level spells. Teleport lets you and up to 8 creatures teleport somewhere on the same plane for a much better version of the Dream Gate. Bring Hornet, Quirrell, Cloth, Constantine, Peter Pan, Mystique, Shaggy, and Alucard with you when you fight the Hollow Knight. The game wouldn't be hard if you just had a whole party, you'd just need to stop fighting everything one on one. 14th level divine soul sorcerers get angelic form, letting you sprout wings and get a permanent 30 foot flying speed. Technically the knight can't fly fly but you've got so many movement abilities by the end of the game you basically can our capstone is the 15th level of sorcerer and sunburst is a nice way to end things it forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 60 foot radius failing that they take 12 d6 radiant damage and they're blinded for a minute half damage and no blinding if they succeed this is a really good big monster aoe shriek thing too bad you can't spam it since you only have one eighth level slot but does that mean that this is a bad build no there isn't a way to get two eighth level slots no one can do that now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you have eighth level spells extra third level spells and big honking massive high spell level damage but when you run out of spells, you still have Quicken Spell and Eldritch Blast, meaning that you can shoot out 8d10 plus 40 damage worth of beams 14 turns in a day. Heck, you can actually melt some of your spell slots down to become sorcery points for more Eldritch Blast spamming. Finally, you've got mobility options to rival a certain Italian plumber, Giuseppe. I mentioned him in the Scott Pilgrim video, he's my building super, which isn't technically a plumber, but he fixes everything and I really appreciate it. So if by any chance you're watching this, hey, how's it going? Thanks for doing what you do. Anyway, uh, the knight can fly? That's, that's cool. For weaknesses, who left you alone with all those sorcerer hit die? By the end of this build, you're going to have somewhere around 100 HP, so you won't have a lot of hits to take. You're also lacking skills with a total of four, meaning that roleplay challenges won't be the best place to showcase your talents. Finally, you have to cast light to see in the dark, which means that you're going to have to tell everything in Hollowness you're coming as you wander down the halls with a flashlight. I think that's the furthest I've ever stretched for a weakness. Don't get me wrong, you're a glass cannon, but you're a glass cannon that can heal itself, teleport away, or just fully melt things that try and shatter you. Maybe just invest in some friends and make it a multiplayer game. God, I want this bug and smash. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. People say I'm too focused on Sony and Nintendo games. So join the Patreon to vote in the poll for classic Microsoft characters like Master Chief, Marcus Phoenix, Frank West, or Forza Car. Just kidding. No Forza Car, but seriously, if you want one of these that isn't Master Chief in the options, you probably gotta go vote.